Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Hi, we're here near Kelowna, Iowa, Amish country, meeting with Thomas Nye. Thomas is uh, many things. One of the things he is is a mail delivery person. That's correct. But he's also an author, mm -hmm. and he's written a number of novels about life um, as English around uh, an Amish community. And, um, well, we'll let Thomas explain more about that. Um, himself as we visit with him. We'll spend some time with his horses and uh, just get to know more about the books that he writes. I know that you're going to enjoy it. Thomas, did you grow up around here? Uh, no. I moved here when I was 19 and in fact had never even seen an Amish person until I was 19 and moved to this community. And, Why did you come here? Uh, my dad um, actually um, moved into the area and my Family was a broken home, and, and I, when I got out of high school, he lived in this area, and uh, I decided to um, move out here where he was, and partly because I was interested in, in learning something about the Amish. And, and that was the first thing that happened when I moved to the community. They had Amish friends, and they introduced me to an Amish family, and I, the first thing I got to know, the first people I got to know were uh, Amish teens about my age and they invited me to go to church with them singing volleyball games and I just had an incredible experience and uh, that that sort of sparked my interest in maybe writing about the Amish at some point in my life. Did you grow up on a farm? No, I grew up in town and uh, in my books very often the main character is someone who grew up in town. I always was very crazy about horses, horse crazy. And, um, and then uh, I had uncles, step uncles that lived on a ranch out in Idaho and one on a dairy farm. And my early experiences were riding horses on their farms and ranch. And, and uh, one was a draft horse that I rode around bareback with no bridle <laughs> as a boy. <laughs> and uh, those kind of experiences end up in my stories um, because those were what molded me into who I am and what my interests and hobbies are today. I was correct that you are, you're a mail delivery person. That's so right. Is that the right word? Is, you're not a mailman, I guess we can't say that. Anymore, yeah, but. people still say sure. that, um, but mail carrier, letter carrier, and uh, I, I carry mail in Iowa City, and it uh, gives me a lot of time to walk along and, and think up ideas for books. <laughs> my route is sort of a wooded, secluded area on one edge of Iowa City and it's really it feels like I'm out you know in the woods and and I, I like that I'm an outdoors person and my books have a lot of stories about being outdoors and that helps um, I'm always I'm very in tune with the weather <laughs> that's a, a big part of, of my world and so the, the weather is an issue in a lot of my stories it really impacts your day like a lot of other professions, like farming, for example, being a letter carrier, you're really out there. In the yes, elements. that is for sure. Yeah, yeah. Did you picture in your mind when you were writing the novel um, a, a, a reader that you're writing for? Um, that's a good question, and that's something that authors should do. Um, my idea actually was to write the book that I wanted to read <laughs> initially, and uh, I wanted to read a book that was about the Amish, but that was about farming. I'm interested in farming with draft horses. I'm interested in farm life. <clears throat> I'm interested in the daily life of the Amish. I want to write what I know. And my experience was as a 19 year old young man coming into a community where there were a lot of Amish. And so my books have taken the theme mostly of a person entering an Amish community and learning something about the Amish and, and sort of exposing the concept of the differences between 
how the Amish live and how the, the rest of the world lives. And the thing that fascinates me the most about the Amish is that they really, they're not a people that decided to look old fashioned or decided to live an old fashioned lifestyle. They're people who just didn't change. Right. They just, when everybody else was progressing and, and changing their farming methods, the Amish chose to stay the same. But yet at the same time, it possibly happened yesterday. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm completely intrigued with writing about the Amish. We started publishing the Draft Horse Wall Calendar 40 years ago. It quickly became a holiday tradition for families to give and receive our calendars. Many tell us it wouldn't be Christmas if there wasn't a Draft Horse calendar under the tree. We've always found the best, most interesting photos showing a variety of Draft Horse breeds put to a wide range of tasks, from threshing oats, making hay, logging hardwood, and performing before appreciative crowds. This year is no different, and the quality hasn't changed either. They cost $16.95 each, postage paid, and prices go down as you buy more. Give us your gift list and we can send them on your behalf. Visit www.ruralheritage.com to order, or call toll-free 877 647-2452. That's ruralheritage.com or 877-647-2452. The Amish guy that I bought these horses from actually did things a lot the, the way that I do them, but I also have known him for a long time. Um, and uh, so I ended up getting ideas from him, believe me, every time I see him, including yesterday when he stopped in, uh, completely a surprise to me, I, he had something to teach me. Every time I see him, and he doesn't do it in a, in a intimidating way, he's just one of those guys that has a wealth of knowledge, and he just can't help but tell you something, and he loves to talk about horses, he loves to talk about um, farming with horses. And every time I see him, he says, uh, um, oh, you know what? When you do this, you ought to do that. <laughs> and I end up putting a lot of his advice in my books, too. Sure. Because that's just, it's good advice and, and interesting. The horses usually are characters in my books. Uh -huh. They're, they have personality, each horse, and, and uh, add to the story. What was the hardest part for you on this book writing journey that you've been on? Writing the books, editing the books, l hearing people's reviews of the books, the um, trying to find a publisher, self-publishing, yeah. all of these different parts. What was what were what were some yeah. of the most difficult parts for you? Well, honestly, the most difficult part is that publishers expect you to market and that is not something that I even imagined myself doing. I'm not a marketing person. Self-promotion. Yes, way. and they expect it, require it. And in fact, um, when I went about the process of trying to get my books published, one of the first things I learned is if I want the book published, it's really not just about how good the book is. It's about how good you're going to be at marketing your own book. So, because I wanted Under the Heavens published really bad, I started a blog, a Facebook page, and both of those are called Amish Horses. It's an Amish Horses blog and an Amish Horses Facebook page. And I began taking pictures of, um, I, I try not to take pictures that would offend anybody Amish, but I take pictures of farms, horses, um, people working with horses in a distance. Amish people aren't aren't bothered by that. Children sometimes, Amish people aren't bothered by that. And, uh, and I have a lot of close Amish friends, so I'm very invested in not offending my Amish friends. Um, and I understand the rules pretty well, and I ask a lot of questions. But um, I uh, found that I needed to come up with a, what's called a marketing platform or an author platform. And uh, so I started building that and then the publisher decided, okay, we're, we're gonna publish your book. You, you've, you've reached out, you've, you've got an audience out there online. Um, that's the most difficult thing. 
I love writing the stories. That's the part I enjoy the most. I'm working on a story right now I'm really excited about and I stay up late at night and when I'm delivering mail I dream up, oh yeah, I know what I can have happen next. Um, I, I love that. The editing process is difficult, partly because um, I wasn't ever really good in English class <laughs> as a student and that's probably my weakness but I've learned a lot and the interesting thing is that I feel I've, I've learned quite a bit and my later books uh, have needed a lot less editing but people still enjoy my early books as much. You You're know? talking about grammatical correction? Right, okay. that mostly. Now there are also um, is uh, editors will tell you there's a problem with your story and that's difficult and they'll very often um, tell me you need to make this more clear you need to make this this they don't like how this reads they didn't that's difficult partly because you get invested in your story and you really like how it's going and have somebody say you need to change something it's kind of hard but um, when I've changed it I've noticed it's they, they, they were right it needed to be changed and it's better and this book originally uh, had a lot more to it and I was convinced I needed to take a lot out and since then I've learned not to put those things in in the first place <laughs> and so it goes a lot faster and this first book took three or four years to write and after that the, the second book was more like six months you know the, and spending about the same amount of time but understanding better what not to do and what to do one uh, guy I bought a team from, um, they were young, and he told me they were broke. Well, they were broke, but they were, I wasn't enough of a horseman to handle them. They were young and strong, and I had some problems with them. And at the time, I thought that was the worst thing that could have ever happened, is to have a, a beautiful team that I had problems with, and I was pretty discouraged. What I didn't know is that it would end up being... Um, beautiful uh, material for books. <laughs> I was able to uh, write into, include in my books the stories of uh, troubles I had with these horses and uh, then on top of that because I was struggling with the horses I had to go back to his place and he kept inviting me to come back. He'd take the horses to his place and use them to do field work and uh, one point he called me and said hey Tom we're plowing today and we thought maybe with six horses and we thought maybe you'd enjoy doing that your horses are in the hitch would you enjoy that I said yeah you bet I would enjoy that hi I'm Joe Mishka of Rural Heritage Magazine I'm on location of one of the many events we cover that celebrates our rural heritage if you enjoy our show check out our magazine where you'll learn more about the people that blend the past with what works today. You can save almost 20% off the newsstand price by subscribing at ruralheritage.com or chat with us at 877-647-2452. That's toll free, 877-647-2452. Tell me the story of Under the Heavens without spoiling it for the, okay. for the readers. All right, I'm very good at that because I don't like my books spoiled. <laughs> I, all of my books have surprise endings in my mind, and, uh, and I like to keep those things secret. Um, Under the Heavens is a story of a boy who has Amish relatives. Um, and I won't go into the whole background of the story, but the idea is that his grandfather wants him to come to the Amish farm and spend the summer. And Lenny is 16. Um, a very reserved boy, nervous, afraid of many things, and, and he comes to uh, Grandpa's farm and he's nervous around his relatives, his Amish relatives, he doesn't know them very well. They're sort of suspicious of him, what bad things is he going to bring into our home? But Grandpa's idea is this boy needs to learn how to farm. and. Uh, so the story is about this boy um, coming to the farm and learning how to farm with draft horses. Now, Under the Heavens is cover to cover draft horses, more than any of my books. Um, but it's 
But there's a story happening about this boy's transformation. Um, a young man gaining confidence through um, a good relationship with his grandfather. And so um, that ends up being sort of the theme of the story is, is this boy coming out of a shell, um, coming away from being a fearful person into being confident. And, um, and there's a little romance in that there's a neighbor girl that uh, he meets and he's dressing and living Amish for the summer and he's at the age where uh, courting begins, if you call it that. Um, and he uh, goes along to the singings and volleyball games and this girl who's a neighbor girl uh, and Lenny keep bumping into each other and, and it's, it's all pretty mild at the beginning and not a big romance. Uh, it's kind of like um, Tom Sawyer and, and Becky Thatcher <laughs> in the initial book. And um, the storyline I like to tell people, this, this Amish Horses series is sort of a, a Huck Finn meets Anna Green Gables type story. So it's, a, it's a sort of an adventure story um, and it's also, you know, a mild romance. And, um, and then as the story goes on, uh, he comes back to the community as he gets older and the story progresses from there. How and many novels are there now? There are three in okay. that series. Uh -huh. And, um, and they, um, yeah, it's the same boy, same girl. <laughs> and, uh, but the story, um, it progresses as he comes, uh, initially from grandpa's and one uncle's farm and stays with a large family, um, in that home. Um, he comes back on a second visit and stays with an uncle who he and his wife, um, have two adopted children who have since left the Amish. And so he ends up staying with his aunt and uncle. And, and that opens up a whole new experience for him. If you'd like to order one or more of Thomas Nye's books, you can send a check or money order to him directly. $15 for each novel and $3 shipping on the first book, $1 each additional book. Send to Thomas Nye, P.O. Box 495, Kelowna, Iowa, 52247. Or you can find ordering information on his website at www.amishhorses.blogspot.com. So the Amish in this area use this type of harness and it's called hip breaching. Yeah. And uh, kind of unusual. People that haven't seen it before think that it looks odd to not have the butt breaching but the Amish are really big on it and and they claim that a horse they claim that horses prefer it <laughs> and I like how the, this man that I bought these horses from uh, likes to say what this horse loves and what that horse doesn't like and he seems to know what the horses think and I think he's right for the most part but he tells me you know that that horse loves that collar and I think it's kind of fun that he thinks of it that way, that a horse loves a collar. And it's, it just means she can get in there and really push a load and the collar is comfortable for her. And that's kind of the way he thinks about his horses and that's something that I really value. And, the, you know, some people are out there saying that Amish people are cruel to their animals. Well, there's people of every walk of life that are cruel to animals. Believe me, this guy is the furthest thing from being cruel to animals than anybody I've ever met. You know, he, he would do just about anything to uh, make a horse comfortable or to help her to have a longer life and to be healthier, to work longer. And as far as working, to them work is something to be respected and appreciated and it's good for people, you know? It's not, it's good for a, a young boy to get out and mow the yard. It's healthy for him. And uh, it's good for horses to get out there and to exercise a little bit. And making them do a little bit of work isn't, girl, lean your head in here. Um, it isn't in any way 
harsh if you're you know, handling it right and if you're keeping their welfare in mind. And I should say my books mostly have Christian um, principles and you can't write a book, in my mind, you can't write a book about the Amish and not have religion right. come into, into the story. Of course. Their whole world is connected right. with their religion. And I try not to be overwhelming with, you know, that topic, but I feel it's only fair to let people know up front that my books um, have scripture verses in them and are Christian stories. And their idea is not to convince you to become what they are. In fact, Amish people are very reluctant to have anybody join their group. Uh, it's not, they will allow it, but very reluctant. So they're not out there trying to convince you to become what they are. Nonetheless, they're very concerned about people and they very commonly will share with you what they feel would help you in your life. And uh, I've had amazing experiences with um, older Amish men that are harness makers who will ask me what I believe, who will share with me what they believe. And you know, I think a common misconception of Amish people is to think of them as, as Pharisee type or, you know, overly religious people. But it's sort of almost an unfortunate coincidence that they, they look so righteous with their clothing because they don't think of their clothing really that way. Their clothing are, it's just they just didn't change. When you wrote the first book, did you have, did you, did you have any idea that you'd be writing more? No. Uh, in fact, I wanted the book to be Under the Heavens. I had that name in mind. I, I fell in love with that name and it fits the story perfectly. And the editor or the publisher said, it needs to say something about the Amish in the title. They wanted to change the title. I didn't want that to happen. I talked to my daughter, who's the photographer who took the cover photos, and she said, Dad, you need to call it the Amish Horses series. <laughs> and I said, uh, well, that means more books. And she said, right. And uh, so we called it the Amish Horses series, and we got the word Amish on the cover, and thus uh, it became a series. And I kind of knew that I wanted to write more, but her saying that pushed me um, forward. And uh, so it became the Amish Horses series so we could get the word Amish on the cover. And the way I went with book two, as soon as book one was um, sort of out of my hands, the editing process was done and they were still working on typesetting. Um, I started type going away on my laptop and getting book two ready. And, and then, I feel like it's something that once you get going, it, it's kind of addictive. If you'd like to order one or more of Thomas Nye's books, you can send a check or money order to him directly. $15 for each novel and $3 shipping on the first book, $1 each additional book. Send to Thomas Nye, P.O. Box 495, Kelowna, Iowa, 52247. Or you can find ordering information on his website at www.amishhorses.blogspot.com. Thanks for joining us today at Rural Heritage and RFD TV, where we borrow from yesterday to do the work of today. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.amishhorses.com ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging, as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information, or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.